Hi, Al, mate. You all right? Thanks for having us on the show. Nice show. I listen to us every day. Thanks, Sean. Um, I, I think Eddie's done all he can do, to be honest. Um, I don't think the players want to play for him. I mean, you've got Tory boys like Sean Longstaff and Dan Byrne, which were nowhere to be seen last night, to be fair. Also, can I ask a question to Simon? Simon, do you think... Um, they get lay a kick off under the lights as a more advantage to the home team. Um, <laughs> that's a question for I you. I don't know. Um, do I, you think it is, Sean? I don't. I don't think so particularly. Personally, I think when you've got a, like a Monday night kick off like last night, the home fans all for it under the lights and things like that. But he has a good stuff for his lads. Newcastle's away games this season in the Premier League. Out of 14 games, only one game has been at 3pm on a Saturday. That's interesting. That's, that's interesting, Sean. That's a bit unfair on the Newcastle fans, to be fair. I mean, yeah. as you know, we travel around the country up and down in with numbers. But to go away at the London, it, like, half past fours, eight o'clock kickoffs. It's a bit of a disgrace, to be fair. Well, that's the broadcasting schedules, and that's one of the attractions of you being such an attractive side at times that you feature in the minds yeah. of broadcasters. So if you've been playing more games that have been under floodlights or at certain times, it's because the broadcast schedules have de determined that they want to watch Newcastle. So you, it's that you're yeah. victims of your own success to some extent in terms of the way that you play. Where do you stand on Eddie, Sean, just before you go on Eddie? Um, to be fair, I love him. He's the best manager we've had since Robson and Keegan and I kind of fall for what he's done but I just think it's that time now where I just don't think they want to play for him anymore that's just the way it comes across they, they just look flat There's I, don't, I no... don't see it like I don't see it like that Sean I still think they want to play for him big time but um, the question is what might they achieve next season Sean thanks for the call Dan's a big Manchester United fan Dan before I get to you we're, we're, we're putting it out there this morning is scrutiny lighter on English managers as opposed to, to foreign managers uh, do they get more of a free pass the likes of Eddie than the likes of Pochettino and Ten Hag uh, there's a message coming in no, uh, Greg is a Spurs fan that is a ridiculous assertion the reverse is true English managers aren't even given opportunities will Gary O'Neill ever be given a top six job depends if he merits it okay. I mean, the, the problem with the, with the Premier League is, is that well it's not the problem it's a globalised marketplace I mean when we have uh, conversations about the lack of representation of ethnicity or the lack of representation of geography in terms of English managers it's also because you're taking the, the talent from around the world six managers in the Premier League are from the British Isles. 33% of the Premier League has British managers, which I think is a relatively high statistic, given yeah. the fact in previous years it's dropped. I don't think that's true. I think if they're good enough, Graham Potter got given an opportunity. He couldn't do it. So this argument that people don't get given an opportunity is not true. Mm. Brendan Rodgers is from these Isles. He got the opportunity to manage Liverpool, uh, which was a, you know, a legacy football club. People have been given opportunities. Tim Sherwood was given the opportunity at Aston Villa and at Tottenham Hotspur. Ask yourself the reasons why English managers don't get the opportunities or, more okay. to the point, don't do the jobs. Dan, United fan, where do you stand in this? Good morning. Good morning, yeah. So I think it's, it, it is a case of, you know, you've got a, an English manager, so, you know, so perfect example is Eddie Howe. Did a great job at Bournemouth. Probably got Newcastle ahead of the curve last year and, and got them to a point where maybe two, three years down the line he was expecting to be in the Champions League. He did it in year, well, year two, essentially. Um, and, you know, they've had a tough one this year with injuries. And last night they were playing Chelsea away. Like, Chelsea are a great side. Yeah, they're struggling a bit themselves, but it's not like they're going to, to Burnley away again. But they've gone to Chelsea and, and in, in some ways, give them a good game. Why is he, I don't understand why he's even under any pressure at all. He deserves all the, the time in the world to wait till he's got his players back, going to the transfer market again next year and, and put it right and, and, and do what he's proved he can do already. Yeah, I mean, Dan, do you, do you agree with this Newcastle fan? Uh, Mark the Geordie, he calls himself. I'm ashamed with that fellow, uh, that, that former colleague there, uh, former caller there, uh, Sean, um, saying it was maybe time up for Eddie because the players aren't playing, but the players would die for Eddie Howe on the pitch. His hands are tied with spending and the squad is quite average. Do you think the Newcastle squad's quite average then? No, I won't say it's average, but I think it's been depleted with injuries. Yeah. When he's got his best players on the field, they do well. Like they, they beat us this year. They've, you know, they, they've given some good team, good games. I remember a game against uh, Liverpool at the start of the year. They were brilliant. They, they, it's not like they're underperforming when they've got all the players out there. They just can't get the players on the field, and sometimes that's how many hours hand, isn't it? Yeah. Dan, briefly, do you think Ten Hag is over-scrutinised? 
Uh, no, but I think the, the position of Man United, Man United manager, regardless of who you are, is always going to be scrutinised. Um, but I think Ten Hag's, you know, been given the right amount of time and, and uh, it should continue to be de- definitely to the end of the year at least. And, you know, start next season if we're struggling, then maybe it's time to look at him. But I think he's got another six months or so yet. Good call. Thank you, Dan. Thanks for your comments. Uh, a lot of you getting in touch this morning, and that's what we love on this show. I always say it, and I always mean it. It's great to hear from you out there. It's 10.30. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.